In the quiet of the moments, we wonder, did I meet a stranger who needed my welcome this day? As the evening shadows gather, we think back on the day and ask, did we listen to the whispers of the voiceless? As we enjoy our evening snack, we sit quietly and reflect, could we have shared from the grace which overflows in our lives? Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Together, let us confess our lies to our God. Ever watchful God, we know that when we could do justice, we chose to ignore the forgotten. That when we could love mercy, we chose to show our mean spirit. That when we could walk humbly with you, we chased after the pied pipers of pride. Forgive us, merciful and loving God. Amen. Lord, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
Our first reading tonight is from one of the historical books of the Old Testament, the second book of Kings. We're reading verses 17 through 37 of the ninth chapter. It's one of those stories that when we read it, when people hear it, we sometimes wonder why in the world does the Bible, our sacred texts, have stories like this. And of course, part of it is because the, the historical, historical books do reflect and tell the story of Israel's history, but it is a slanted version, like most histories, because it's, as I was taught when I was studying history, the winners get to write the history. And so the stories sound almost too good to be true in what the people of Israel and what some of the leaders were able to do. So we always take these kind of readings, I think, not just with a grain of salt, but a lot of grains of salt, and try to figure out what it is that they're trying to tell us in such a story, which is basically how they struggle to live as God's people in difficult times. And Jezreel, the sentinel standing on the tower, spied the company of Jehu arriving and said, I see a company. Joram said, take a horseman, send him to meet them and say, and let him say, is it peace? So the horseman went to meet him. He said, thus says the king, is it peace? Jehu responded, what have you to do with peace? Fall in behind me. The sentinel reported saying the messenger reached them, but he is not coming back. Then he sent out a second horseman who came to them and said, Thus says the king, is it peace? Jehu answered, What have you to do with peace? Fall in behind me. Again the sentinel reported, He reached them, but he is not coming back. It looks like the driving of Jehu, son of Nimshi, for he drives like a maniac. Joram said, Get ready, and they got his chariot ready. Then King Joram of Israel and King Ezehiah, Ahaziah of Judah set out each in his own chariot and went to see meet Jehu. They met him at the property of Naboth the Jezreelite. When Joram saw Jehu, he said, Is it peace, Jehu? He answered, What peace can there be so long as the many whoredoms and sorceries of your mother Jezebel continued? Then Joram reigned about and fled, saying to Ahaziah, Treason, Ahaziah. Jehu drew his bow with all his strength and shot Joram between the shoulders so that the arrow pierced his heart and he sank in his chariot. Jehu said to his aide, Bidkar, lift him out and throw him on the plot of ground belonging to Naboth the Jezreelite. For remember when you and I rode side by side behind his father Ahab, how the Lord uttered this oracle against him. For the blood of Naboth and for the blood of his children that I saw yesterday, says the Lord, I swear I will repay you on this very plot of ground. Now therefore lift him out and throw him on the plot of ground in accordance with the word of the Lord. When King Ahaziah of Judah saw this, he fled in the direction of Beth Hagan. Jehu pursued him, saying, Shoot him also. And they shot him in the chariot at the ascent to Gur, which is by Iblium. Then he led to Megiddo and died there. His officers carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem and buried him in his tomb with his ancestors in the city of David. In the eleventh year of Joram, son of Ahab, Ahaziah began to reign over Judah. When Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. She painted her eyes and adorned her head and looked out of the window. As Jehu entered the gate, she said, Is it peace, Zimri, murderer of your master? He looked up to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? Two or three eunuchs looked out at him. He said, Throw her down. So they threw her down. Some of her blood splattered on the wall and on the horses, which trampled her. Then he went in and ate and drank. He said, See to that cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. But they went to bury her. They found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of their ha her hands. When they came back and told him, he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spoke by the servant Elijah the Tishbite. In the territory of Jezreel, the dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel. 
The corpse of Jezebel shall be like dung on the field in the territory of Jezreel, so that no one can say, This is Jezebel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then our psalm for tonight is Psalm 6, and here's a paraphrase. Please don't push me away this night, God of my heart, or send me to my room until I learn how to be nice. I am so worn out. My weariness is showing signs of utter fatigue, and my soul, well, it is terrified by what tomorrow, not to mention tonight, might bring. And to be honest, I can't help but wonder why I feel abandoned by you. So come, come and gather me up in those arms of hope held so tight that all I can hear is the steady rhythm of your heart. Will I be able to remember you when I have taken my last breath? Or will the grave keep my songs from reaching your ears? I don't know, but it is hard to imagine being more miserable than I am right now, crying myself to sleep, my eyes red and itchy from all the tears caused by my nightmares. So come now in the silence and the shadows. Come wading through the puddles of tears. Come pushing through all the terrors that crowd so close to my heart. Come to show those who cannot stand me that you have heard the sobs of my soul. And you come to be with me now and stick close to me until they give up and walk away shaking their heads, not realizing that you will stay by my side forever. And then our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 7 through 15. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. Probably the first prayer I remember learning was the simple one that my mother taught us when we would go to bed. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. But then I discovered that there was another prayer that was important for me to know. And I learned it mainly by listening. Certainly as I learned my first prayer by listening to my mother, but it was while sitting in church that every Sunday the people would say the same prayer together, the prayer that we know as the Lord's Prayer. It wasn't ever printed in the bulletin. It was just assumed that everyone knew it and everyone who sat in worship on a regular basis could come to know it just by simply listening to the voices of all those around them, the voices of young people who spoke it with great vigor and great voice, and then their grandparents, who sometimes just seem to whisper it. But it's that prayer that, in a sense, unites all believers. That it's the one prayer that pretty much any place you go to worship anywhere in the world, this prayer in some form, in some variation, is used. I've always found it interesting because I experienced where I was growing up. The great debate, debate always had to do with the debts or debtors, or do you forgive trespasses and trespassers? And now it seems that in some churches they're debating whether or not to change the language to reflect 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. I always thought that was an interesting part to, for people to be concerned about. Never about give us our daily bread, as if because we said that prayer, we deserved more from God than from other people or struggling to be able to resist temptation, to be able to say no to evil, to simply figure out how it is that we lead the kind of lives that reflect that we truly are trying to follow God. Last year when I did a sermon series on the Lord's Prayer, I discovered the wide varieties of just simple translations. Here's a translation from of the Lord's Prayer in the New Living Translation. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Then there's the contemporary English version. Our Father in heaven, help us to honor your name. Come and set up your kingdom so that everyone on earth will obey you as you are obeyed in heaven. Give us our food for today. Forgive us for doing wrong as we forgive others. Keep us from being tempted and protect us from evil. And then about, oh, 20, 25 years ago, a Presbyterian pastor and later teacher uh, named Eugene Peterson here in the States published a uh, trans a paraphrase, I think he called it, of the Bible, called The Message, and this is how he paraphrased the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best as above, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're a blaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. And when I was doing the sermon series last summer, one of the things I challenged people is to think about the Lord's Prayer, not just we do often say it by rote, but what does it really say to us? And invited people to just simply trying to write their own version, their own paraphrase of the Lord's Prayer. And I've tried to do it several times. And here's what I came up with today. Holy One who dances with stars and sits by the side of the forgotten, whether babbled by infants or whispered in fading memories, your name reminds us of who we are. May that beloved community crafted in the hopes of your heart become our family where we are as we live in your hope and make justice our offering to you. As you feed us with substance and spirit, mm -hmm. may we work so no one hungers. And as you set aside your grudges to forgive our every foolishness, May we always choose to share mercy. Walk with us so we will not follow the Pied Pipers of seduction. Strengthen us so we will always choose goodness over evil. For the beloved community is our hope. Your humility is what strengthens our faith. And your grace reveals your true nature to us. Amen. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of Stress and grief, my soul has often found relief, and oft escaped the.
tempter's snare, by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joy I feel, the bliss I share of those whose anxious spirits burn with strong desires for thy return. With such I hasten to the place where God my Savior shows his face and gladly take my station there and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wing shall my petition bear to I invite you to join with me now for a few moments of prayer. Let us begin by reflecting on our day and those people who touched our lives, who cared for us, whose words brought healing and hope to us, whose smile cheered us, whose questions challenged us, whose presence reminded us that we are loved and beloved. And let us lift up those prayers of thanksgiving and silence to our God. And let us offer up our prayers for the brokenness of our world, our nations, our communities, those around us, our families, our friends, ourselves. We pray for this day for those who continue to seek to live out their faith, however they define it or would describe it, who share hope and grace, love and justice, peace and wonder with others. In particular, we pray for the elders, the members of the churches, the ministers uh, in Nottinghamshire. We pray for nations that are struggling to find peace and hope and healing to deal with climate change, uh, weather-related problems, financial crises. Mm, pray for my country that's engaged once again in a great political theater in which the powerful and the rich will make others suffer because of their poor opinions and poor choices. We pray for the people in Rotterdam. We pray for leaders at every level for their wisdom, their grace, their ability to become true servant leaders. We pray for the Reverend Caroline Andrews, who's recently been discharged from the hospital for her rest and recovery during her holiday. For the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr, for peace, courage, and strength as she navigates through her cancer diagnosis. For the Reverend Hamish Temple, for Jean Schink as she continues to recover from her fall and for the Reverend Brian Schink and his care and concern for her. We pray for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery, for Father Andy, Monia's parish priest. We pray for Janet Clarkson as she recovers from her stroke there in the hospital with Grace and Basil for three-year-old Akari who's home and 
building her strength back after three surgeries. Pray for my friend David, who's going through chemotherapy. We pray with Ankatea for Madeline on her courageous journey to recovery. With the Reverend Claire and Brian, Reverend Brian Davison for their daughter Susie. We pray for Cheryl and pray for Prince and the rest of the family as they continue to care for her. We pray with Andy for Mike, his dad, and we continue to be grateful for the ongoing care that Ruth and Liz give to Mike. We pray with Allison for Joy Rice, recovering from knee surgery. We pray for John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. And we pray this night for those who grieve, for those who grieve for Alex Harrow, for the congregation of St. Andrews and all who will miss him. For those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton. For those who grieve for the Reverend Keith Birchall. And for those who grieve for the Reverend Leo Osborne, especially Charlotte. And in the silence of these moments, we will lift up those prayers that we carry in our hearts. Whether we have spoken them aloud or lifted them to, in silence, all of our prayers are lifted in the name of the one who taught us to pray using our own words, tradition, language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. And now may the peace of the rolling waves, the peace of the silent mountains, peace of the singing stars, and the deep, deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. And it looks like the computer doesn't want to play the closing song, but may you rest in God's grace and hope and love this night, my friends. Mm -hmm.